Hallelujah. All right. So this morning is the last day of our fast and we've declared it an impartation service. So I want to tell you so that you can have a different kind of expectation. It's going to be quite prophetic because I believe that you've been fasting and there are, you know, there are things you want to pray about and declare and we're going to receive today. Can you turn your Bible? So I'm talking to you about faith and impartation for acceleration. Faith and impartation for acceleration. Acts chapter 14 in verse 8. Acts chapter 14 in verse 8. And I want us to follow the reading. Acts of the Apostles chapter 14 in verse 8. The Bible says this, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet. Now, take note of the word, impotent in his feet. The Bible says the man was paralyzed in his legs, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never, who never had worked. What does it mean when it says impotent in his feet? Impotent in his feet means that this man could not carry himself. Because once you're paralyzed in your legs, you can carry yourself. This man could not carry himself. His leg was paralyzed. And someone says, well, I'm not paralyzed. I'm thankful that you're not. But maybe you're not impotent in your feet, but maybe you're impotent in business. You run the business, but you can't pay your bills. Maybe you're not impotent in business. Maybe it's your life that is impotent. Because once you are impotent in your feet, what it means is that you are stagnated. You can't move from point A to point B. For you to move from point A to point B, someone has to move you from point A to point B. You are impotent. So you find out that although you are 45 years old, your life has not moved forward from when you were 30 years old. The Bible says that this man was impotent in his feet. Impotent in his feet. His feet were there and his feet were not working. What does impotent in his feet mean? Impotent in his feet also means, what does it mean? It also means that there's activity but there's no result. His legs were there but the legs were not working. Oh, so beautiful yet not married. So hardworking yet not profitable. So dynamic yet not progressive. He was impotent. Not that he didn't have legs, but the legs did not have strength. You know, so, you know, th there was there's this testimony from, from church and very challenging testimony. And this brother in one of our leaders in church was sharing with me how God broke, how God used us to break a curse in the family. I said, What's the curse in the family? He said, When I began to do well, you know, when I joined the mission, I began to do well, he said, My mother called me and said, You've broken the curse. He said, what do you mean? He said, look at your father's family. The women are the ones that carry the family. The men are never financially able. And it was like, okay, he understood in his own family, that was it, where he was born. But he was not looking back. He said, wow, this is true. Uncle this, uncle this, uncle this, uncle this. Then he found one uncle that was rich. He said, uh-huh, look at that, my uncle that is rich, but that one is rich. And he said, mm-mm. His wife was the one that was rich. She died and she took over the wealth. He said, the family you are born for, the women do better than the men. He said, I'm grateful that you're in your head, the curse is broken. So you have families where the men are impotent financially. So the Bible says this man was sitting at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled. He was crippled from his mother's womb. He had never worked. His finance had never worked. Every time he wants to move from here to here, someone has to help him move. There's some of you here. People have to help you move for you to make progress. I'm going to declare over you today that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, listen to me. The season of your help has come. But it's a bigger blessing. You will now become an helper. You will be so blessed you become an helper. Amen. You'll be so blessed you become an helper. Amen. Glory to God. When people are impotent in their feet, if you say, I want to go to the restroom, they have to depend on someone or depend on, the, on a wheelchair to carry them there. They can do it by themselves. So their life is stuck. There's activity, there's no result. For them to move forward, someone has to, they are people dependent. Your days of being people dependent are over. Amen. 
So the Bible says this. The Bible says he was crippled from his mother's womb. Verse 9. Verse 9. And the same had Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceived he had faith to be healed. Take note of that. Verse 10. And the Bible says, and he said with a loud voice, stand upon thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And let me tell you what how this, how this works. If for any reason in your life, you feel as if you are stuck, before you pray, do this. What do you do? Go back to the word of God. Listen. 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 Until your faith rises to maturity. If for some reason, your business is not working as it used to work, before you pray, go back to the word of God. How do you go back to the word of God? All these messages we have preached that is on Harvest's TV, all the scriptures we have taught you in Next Level Prayer, you go back and you listen and you listen. And the reason why is that as you begin to listen, faith begins to rise. Faith begins to rise. Faith begins to rise. It's like a tire that is flat. As you are pumping air, the fire will begin to grow. Your faith will begin to grow. Your faith will begin to grow because you need to move now. Your faith will begin to grow. Remember what this guy did. Maybe you, are, maybe you are believing God for some kind of expansion in your business. Maybe you are, oh my God, can I, let me delve into something. Maybe you are believing God to break free from an addiction. Maybe you have an heroin addiction, a cocaine addiction. What should you do? I will tell you what you should do. This is what you should do. Go back and go and read Romans chapter 8 and Romans chapter 12. The Bible says this, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The Bible says, and sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not under the law, you are under grace. Keep listening, keep listening. The first thing is this, as you keep listening, oh wow, let, I'm going to slow down because I feel, I feel this word is for someone. Let's say that, and I want to give you something. Let's say this is a Bible of dealing with addiction. Either sexual addiction, porn addiction, masturbation, masturbation. Just in case you didn't hear me because church wants to behave as if that the world does not exist. So this is a Bible of dealing with heroin addiction, cocaine addiction, porn addiction, sexual addiction, masturbation, pornography. The first mistake we all make is that we try to stop it. It doesn't work by you trying to stop it. The reason why is this. By the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail. So you, so you will notice something. You will stay away from me for one month. Then you go back in full force. So you don't watch the pornography for like one month. You say, oh, I'm free, I'm free. Then you go back. Then the way you consume it after one month. You're like, wow, you just cover up for the distance. You don't smoke. You don't smoke the marijuana for one week. Then the week you start, both the ones you smoke, this smoke for one week, you take it on. So how do you break it? This is how you break it. And listen to this. And Paul taught us this. He says, let him that still still no more. He said, remember the former man you used to be. He said, remember the new man who you are. Sorry, that's right. There. He said, you should remember who you are. So how do you break addiction? You go to the word of God and remind yourself. So you go to scriptures like Romans 8 and, Roma, um, Romans 8 and 12. The Bible says that for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The Bible says sin will not have dominion over me. As you begin to say, faith will begin to rise. Faith will begin to rise. You know why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As soon as faith rises, you will stand up and walk. Stand up and walk means your emancipation will come freely. This is the way to change from inside out. And this change will be permanent because it's not something you're forcing yourself to do. When your faith starts working, it will begin to correct the desires on the inside because that's where the problem is. It's in the mind. So let's say you are here and I'm teaching you right now. Let's say you are here, you're praying for something. You're praying for something. You're declaring something. Go back. Hear the word. Go back to the messages. Take the scriptures. Go to Harvest's TV. Get, put a sermon that pertains to what you're praying for. Listen and listen and listen. Let's go back to the scripture. I want to show you that quickly. Let's go back. Put the scripture up now. The Bible says in verse 9. In verse 9. In verse 9. Remember the guy was impotent in his faith. And the same head Paul speak. And let me tell you something quickly. Leave the scripture there. This is the problem. When people don't know the heart, people, let me say this again. People think you're stupid and say, you come to church on Sunday, you come on Wednesday, you go every week. It's just a waste of time. I go once in a month. What's the difference? And the reason why is that they don't understand that every time you come to church is a faith building process. The thing with the faith building process is this. It's not obvious, but you have been built. I'll give you a good example. How many of you have found out that one day you just became a size bigger? That your clothes did not enter you again. Did you find that at one point? Yes or no? 
You found that out, right? Was it the last food you ate? No, it was you ate small. You ate small. Even the day you found out you didn't eat, but the accumulation of what you have been eating has turned that into your size. That is faith building process. Keep eating the word. Keep eating the word. Keep eating the word. You will just come up one day like, wow, I've changed. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says, and the same man, remember, was in a wheelchair. He must have been very difficult to get to this point in his life. He said, the same man, who, the same man, the, and the same head Paul speak. And when he heard Paul speak, although he was in pain, although he was ashamed, he kept on, he kept on beholding perfect. He was beholding him. And next thing, and perceiving he had faith to be healed, as he was listening, his faith was building. His faith was building. Guess what? He even got to a place where he didn't know his faith was ready. Can I, can I say something quickly? Some of you, the reason why some things you are praying for has not happened is this. You have not built up your faith for what you are praying for. I want to ask you a question. I can go to the supermarket because people ask this question all the time. They say, I'm praying for this. It has not happened. But the truth is that you've not built up your faith for you to see the things you're praying for. So what do you do? Keep praying and your faith is being built because your faith is going to come to what? Maturity. The way the Bible says it is this. It says when the cloud is full, it will of natural cause empty themselves upon the earth. What you have to do is keep loading your car. Did you, did you do the, the water cycle? What's it called now? From, from rain to clouds. Is it called water cycle? It's called water cycle. So what happens? The water from the earth is evaporated into the cloud. But it does not turn into the rain until the clouds becomes what? Full. There's nothing wrong with what you are doing. It's just not full. Ah. Let me tell you something. Don't abort the process. You are praying about something. You are praying about something. You are confessing the word. You are confessing the word. There's nothing wrong. The cloud is not just what? Full. When the cloud is full, the rain will come out. So, in the water cycle, the sun will evaporate, will suck up the water from the earth. And it sucks it. As it sucks it, it doesn't rain immediately. It will gather in the clouds. And it will gather in the clouds. Then when the cloud becomes full, without any announcement, the rain will pour. Keep speaking over your business. The rain will pour. Keep speaking over your health. The rain will pour. Keep speaking. The problem is that instead of us to be speaking, we get discouraged and we stop halfway. And our clouds become half cloudful. And half cloudfuls cannot produce rainfall. Are you hearing me? So I was saying something. So sometimes you are believing God for something that your faith cannot carry. Remember the principle, be it unto you according to your faith. So if your faith cannot carry, that spiritual transaction cannot manifest. So I'll give an example. You walk into a store and you have 10,000 naira and you want to buy a pair of shoes. And they say the pair of shoes is just is 25,000. You want to buy a pair of shoes with socks. They say a pair of shoes is 25,000. The socks is 2,000 naira. You know what happens? You're stuck. You're stuck not because you don't have money, but you're stuck because your money is not sufficient for what? That transaction. So sometimes we're trying to use our faith. Our faith is not working, not because God is not faithful. Our faith is not working because we've not built our faith up to that level. If I were you, what I would do is that I will go back into my faith. I will keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. I will come to a place where I can build my faith and my faith can achieve that. And I will tell you a practical story. There was a time in my life I prayed for people that are sick. This is me, not you. I'll pray. If I have a headache, I'll pray. Then. Once you say you are deaf, you are dumb, you are blind, you're in a wheelchair, you are using crutches, I will just jump you. Even if I pray for you, I know my faith is not going to work. The reason why is that I had not grown myself to that level. Can I be honest with you? There are some of you that if you see someone that is demon possessed, just call somebody to come and pray for them. Don't form what you are not. <laughs> Don't say, ha, ah. because if the, if the guy just does, yeah, he say, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. Say that I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. 
you will just be honest that you know what i know potentially oh, in christ i can cast out demons but realistically i've not done this before the one that's done it come and teach me how to do it so the bible says this and the man was listening and perceiving he had faith and this is this is the last point and perceiving he had faith to be healed verse 10 what did he do he said with a loud voice stand on their feet and it, oh this is very powerful this is the next this is the next mistake so when you keep building your faith watch this now when you keep building your faith sometimes your faith comes to maturity and what you need to do is today action then you don't act again action means go back and apply for the business you don't act again action means go back and do what you have not done you don't act again the reason why is that you've done it for such a long time you have gradually become used to that problem you don't act again the bible says that watch this now the man had faith to be healed but it took paul to challenge him that said sir your faith has risen to maturity get off now all the time you did it and failed your faith was not present now over time your faith has risen but now you are afraid to step out and date again all the time you lost money in business your faith had not risen now your faith has risen stand up and do something you can't do it so paul so some of you are here you have attended wine press powerful your faith has been stirred up wine press is over stand up and walk wine press is over stand up and walk go back to the company go back to negotiation go back and walk with them one of our pastors called me yesterday and said, Pastor, this is a sorry moment for me. I said, what happened? He said, I convinced my younger sister to come, for, to come for a wine press. And you know, my younger sister is SS. We believe for a miracle. I said, so why are you shaking? He said, because I'm in the hospital. The first test result has come out. My sister is AS. The testimony was very powerful. But what touched me was that they went to hospital the next day after wine press. Because they understood they have received something. I want to ask you a question. The way I know you have received is that you will do what you have not done before. Are you doing it? The reason why is that, just imagine if Paul did not say, that man will have had faith to be healed and be paralyzed. He will have had faith to be married and be paralyzed. He will have had faith for expansion and be paralyzed. The question, are you sure the faith is not in you, but it's not working because you refuse to rise up? He says, and he said with, the man, and he said with a loud voice, stand on your feet. And the next line is very powerful. And the man began to leap and walk. And that's very instructive. Did you notice it didn't walk first? He began to leap and walk. The way it works, when you start using your feet, you might leap and walk. But most people, as soon as they're leaping, they go back and sit on the wheelchair. So you start it, and things are going well, and they shake. You say, ah, I told God I'd done it. You go back. Ah, uh -uh. The man was leaping until he began to walk. You would tell yourself that I am leaping, I'm going to walk. I am leaping, I'm going to walk. I am leaping, I'm going to walk. Leaping means that, that's leaping. But it could have taken four steps. I mean, like, ah, I'm sorry, I'm not here. Let me go back and sit down. If he said that, it would have not seen for manifestation. So he was leaping. So the question is this. When faith has entered, walk. You will leap, but walk. Somebody say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I want you to notice something. The change of this man came when he gave himself to two things. To listening. Listening. And the second thing is to acting on the word. Listening. And what? Acting on the word. Let me tell you something. Only the doers of the word is blessed. We can preach to next year. If you don't do, you don't see the blessing. Only the doer of the word is blessed. Oh. Only the doer of the word is blessed. Braguva shatiakapa. A lady that is planning to go for IVF to get pregnant, this year you will have the pregnancy with the IVF. He says, Only the doer of the word is blessed. I know they have rejected you three times. You go back and apply again because you know that your fortune has changed. You have encountered favor. You go back and do it again. The 
partnership you have been praying for, you go back into it again. The reason why is that something has changed. You, you cannot be part of this grace. This is mighty grace here. This is mighty grace here. You cannot be a lion's child and be a chicken. It's not in your DNA. Lions give birth to lions. Chicken give birth to chicken. You are in a lion type ministry. That is your destiny. You see us taking leap steps of big steps of faith. Big steps of faith. Two years ago, wine press, we were in a smaller hall than this. When we did wine press, oh, someone sent me a message. Old, old member. He said, I remember the first wine press. It was even in Bagada. It was in one village in Bariga. One village there. Where you fetch water in the morning. But when we're there, we're seeing this. He said, you said it. He said, when I saw the picture online, he said, I broke down. I said, my God, you are faithful. Let me tell you something. When you see what is happening in your church, God is not just concerned about building. He's concerned about your life. Why place people is feeling fire? South Africa, Kenya, Cameroon, this and this. Ah, why should you be local? Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above what we can ask or think. Just three or four years ago, we are trying to buy this place. We didn't have the cash to buy the property. The pastor in just said we should take a loan. That was our financial state. Guess what? I said, no, we'll not take a loan. But that's not where the testimony is. The testimony is this. What we spent on wine press is almost equal to what we used to buy this place. And yet, we didn't raise one offering. No personal solicitation for finances. See how grace can take you. See how grace can take you. I'm just helping you appreciate the place of grace you are. And let me say something to you. There are years and there are years. All of you that are older here will notice this. There will just be one year that your life changed. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Everything will just change. You just move. Well, someone told me, say, Pastor, last year I didn't have a house. This year I have four houses. Including house in Ikoyi. How does that happen? There's one year like that. I'm prophesying to you that this year, this year will be that year of quantum leap. I said this year will be that year of quantum leap. I said this year will be that year of quantum leap. Ah, Shatoni Kapali Soparakwas. You have been waiting on God for 21 days. I said this year will be that your quantum leap. Your family friend will use you as a reference point of answer prayers. You will say hey, in them, say, Lord, you did it for Jude. Lord, you did it for Abayomi. Lord, you did it for Uche. Lord, you did it for Anna. The same way you did it for Jude, my own. You will become a reference of answer prayers. Shout, I receive it. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. Oh my God. One thing I, I may not see, there are many things you could be ahead of me in life of, but something I've trained myself to believe in God's word. Ah, and the reason why is that I've seen God walk. This last one, press people, crutches, wheelchair, bedridden, over 10 testimonies. Oh, they say they arranged those in the stadium. What about those that were here in the houses? We touched them there. Let your faith be high. He says, All things are possible to him that believe it. One pastor came to me and said, Wine press. He said, I hope you know that you are crazy. I said, what do you mean? He said, you have crazy feet. I said, okay. He said, how do you do a program weekday? People are going to the office. He said, when people do this kind of program, they do it Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You put your own Wednesday. I said, it didn't even occur to me. He said, then you did it and taught me that bridge is closed. 
he said, and the place is still jammed. Physical side, jammed. Online, jammed. Friday, we said, please, no more seat. Just stand anywhere you are. Just find a place to stand. If you can't, just hang around. Just hang somewhere. The woman had been carried everywhere with walking stick. He said, see me walking, see me walking, see me walking. As they were trying to fix her leg, someone broke her leg and torn the leg. The leg had become torn. Her bone had been moved. He said, all the pains are gone, I can walk. Those are, those are the mighty. God does these things. Let me tell you something. Eh? When you see miracles, always think that, thank you, Lord. You are showing me what is possible. So that in my situation, if I have this kind of need, I will never doubt your power. Some of you, you don't need the miracle. That's not what you need. But there's something else you need. The same power, sir. The same power, sir. The same power, sir. Can destroy all yokes. Impartation. What is impartation? Impartation is spiritual technology for transfer. What is impartation? Impartation is what? Spiritual technology for transfer. I'll give an example. All of you that have iPhones, I can transfer photos, files to you through what? AirDrop. I can transfer to you through what? Bluetooth. So we can transfer. But impartation is that when God wants to move something from someone to somebody else, he uses impartation to move it. He moves it from a region where it is and moves it to wood it do that doesn't have. They told me chapter 34 verse 9. Let me show you an example. So, impartation is a spiritual technology for what? Transfer. The Bible says in sorry, Exodus 34 verse 9. Exodus 34 verse 9. Bible says, Exodus 34 verse 9. You have the right scripture. The Bible says, and Joshua, the son of Nun, verse 19. You're right. You have the first scripture before. You're very correct. 34 verse 9. They told me 34 verse 9, not Exodus. They told me, they told me 34 verse 9. You are very correct. They told me 34 verse 9. Let's do it together. I want to go. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of wisdom because he went to Harvard, because he took a training course, because of mentorship. He said Joshua was quite stupid before. All of a sudden, by the next day, Joshua was full of wisdom. Why? He said, because Moses, the man of God, had impacted him. Ah! There are two things I see about impartation here. It's a technology of transferring from where it is to where it is not. But secondly, impartation is acceleration. If he was meant to train for wisdom, it could have taken him 10 years. He would have done a four-year degree. What was meant to be four years? Bam! In one minute. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And the reason I'm saying so is this. Many of you, this morning as I speak, there will be transfer. <laughs> oh, as, as I speak, there will be what? A transfer. How does impartation happen? We saw one way, laying on hands. The second way impartation happened, Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 2. You just leave this place and your intelligence quotient has moved higher. You just leave this place and all of a sudden, all manners of favor that never used to happen to you before begins to happen. Look at Ezekiel 2, 2. The Bible says, And the spirit of Makaro Monokaye, He said, and the spirit entered into me. This no longer is sermon. This now transfer. This no longer preaching. This is now transfer. He said, as he spoke, the spirit entered. So, we don't just teach favor. We transfer favor. We don't just teach grace. We transfer grace. We don't just teach do well. We transfer do well. We don't just teach the miraculous. We transfer. He said, and the spirit entered into me as he spake unto me. You know what I'm telling you this? 
Because I want to be hungry for a deposit. I want to be hungry. I want to see. Some weeks ago, Reverend Samadami was here. Some of you, we didn't announce it because we didn't want it to be a big service. As it was going, as the custom is, sir, you can't come without praying for us. And he would take his hands and lay it on my head. It's not empty hand on empty head. It's transfasa. Someone said, it has never happened to me. You have never asked for it. He said, and Joshua. So, Moses had wisdom. And as he laid hands on Joshua, such as I have, I give to you. All of a sudden, wisdom transferred. Let me tell you something. I work very hard. You can ask those that are close to me. I work very hard. But can I be honest with you? With how I work, I can't tell you what I've achieved was hard work. I can tell you from here to here to here, hard work. And here is hard work. But I'm not here. I'm here. Because where hard work fin- starts and where it finishes, grace work takes over. Can I tell you the truth? If you can explain all the blessings you have in your life, you are not blessed. The people that are truly blessed will tell you that. I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I'm strategic. But along the line somewhere, this thing called grace has entered for me. This thing called grace entered for me. One guy met me. He said everything was going bad. But la- he said two years ago I met someone. He said, and that relationship changed the trajectory of my finance forever. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. Are you ready for impartation today? Impartation comes by, by laying of hands and by speaking. In impartation, there's transfer. But impartation also does, impartation also activates. How many of you have SIM cards that NIN has cut you off now? Anybody here? The SIM is still there but doesn't work. Yes or no? Why? Because the SIM is not activated. What does impartation do? There are blessings you carry by the reason of being born again. But it's not showing. You are already favored, but the favor is not showing. You are already blessed. The blessing is not showing. He doesn't show at all. doesn't show anywhere. By impartation, we activate it. Oh, wow. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. The Bible says this. So the first word impartation is by receiving words. So we impact by speaking. Second way, how do, you imp- how do you receive grace? Look at it. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have all sufficiency in all things. May abound to what? Every good work. Give me the amplified version. Uka. If you attend this church, our secret is grace. That's how our language is grace, grace, grace. This is my story. See, it's simple. It's simple. Wine press. Saul was busy serving a wine press. As he was serving, Saul was walking past. And God says, give her your car. Ah. Praise God. Excuse me. I don't know you before, but take her keys. Strange, strange things are strange. What? He's not the pastor. He's not the one on the pulpit. But grace located him. I want to ask you, where did David submit his CV to? For Samuel to remember him. David didn't submit any CV. But God referred David to Samuel himself. There are certain quarters that you'll be referred to direct from heaven. Direct from heaven. Praise God. The Bible says this. Let's read. And God is able to make all grace. Now, if you wonder what grace, the parenthesis helps us. All grace, read together. I want to go now. Every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always 
and under all circumstances whatever the need be be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid support furnished in abundance for every good he says you will require no aid that means loan will become a thing of the past when they say a project is 100 million he said that's fine i have got a capital when they say he's super five billion, say that's fine of God because all grace, all grace, all grace are rapper told her. Your husband asks you, only need the money. You said no. You can add to what I have, but no need. Your wife says, your wife says, what kind of woman is this? You say, all grace, all grace. So when you give me her money, not because of need, you are giving me because you love me, because left to me. All grace I prosai. That grace is coming on you today. Somebody shout grace. Say grace. Say grace. Say this is my story. Impartation is powerful. Notice the Abrahamic fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, before they die, they will say, Bring your children. They will say, Don't let me die with a blessing. Let me transfer these things to them. So grace comes. Impartation comes by words. Impartation comes by what? Oh, wow. Let me show you. Go back to verse 7. Sit down one minute. We're going to close. Mago, Lebra, Gadi. How does grace come? Verse 7. He says this. Let everyone give. There's a giving component to grace. I know that religious people and pulpit crooks have spot everything. But you can only have counterfeit because it's original. He said, let everyone give. As he has made up his mind. This one they will say, if you want to give 10,000, stand up. 2,000 dollars. We only call that all those rubbish. He said, let everyone give as he makes up his mind. What, me, what it means is God that will put this thing in your mind and say, give your first 1 million. Give your first 1,000 naira. Give your first 10 million. He says, he said, when he now gives in your mind, proposing that, he said, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. That's why when we take Isaac offering, we don't ask for any kind of number. We just say, write whatever you are going to give or give. Because there's no follow-up. It's not, it's not a pledge. It's an opportunity to be graced. It's not a pledge. It's an opportunity to be graced. He says it. And for God loves, take note of, for God loves, read the next line. He takes pleasure in prizes above other things. Unwilling to do, unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it, giver. The next verse 8, verse 8. Based on that, verse 8 now, it now says, and God, when the person has become prompt to do it, joyous, generous giver, and God is able to make all grace. He didn't say the pastor's prayer. You don't pray into grace, you give into it, sir. and God is able to make all grace that's why in our church you hardly take we will hardly make pledges all those kind of things but every January as commanded we'll come together and we'll give an Isaac offering an offering that stretches us what amount be left to you but it must stretch and all of a sudden all manners of where's, where's pastor pastor come and pastor Bela come share that testimony you, you, yeah just Yeah. You know, I we're in a bit of a transition. So we were I, moving I, abroad yeah, in some yeah. I find myself, you know, packing living in Nigeria, living abroad. Yeah. And um, I gave my Isaac seed. And you know how it is. So living in Nigeria and living abroad, abroad means the income is from here. And we know what Forex is saying, right? You know, um it's a story of ease and grace. 
one of the major things is that first of all, I had to do my I had to redo my financial goal three times because I kept meeting it, and then I would go and do it hold again. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. The goal you set in January. Yes. By the time it goes to like March or April, you had to do it again. A again. Because you had met the goal. Yes. Then you had to do it then again. Then I had to do it again, and I had to do it again. And but what was most um, I don't know should I call it spectacular yeah. about it is that my Nigerian clients started paying me in dollars. There was no compulsion to. They just decided and said, you know what? Let's pay you. Let's pay for my husband. They were like, let's pay you in foreign currency, and. You know, you're, you're it, not it wasn't... asking them. They are telling you. Yeah. This is what it means when the Bible says, "And God is able to make all grace, every favor in your projects, an earthly person come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances, whatever they need be, be self-sufficient." Ah, the problem is that every time you give, you feel forced. It doesn't come for those that force it. You want the pastor to see. That's the problem. This thing between you and Jehovah. The problem is that every time you give, you give us convenience, not what he says. You need to give what he says. Every time they say that, they are looking for something. But that's the thing. That's why you are where you are here. As we conclude the service this morning, impartation comes by word. You activate grace by the giving. We're going to do three things. The first thing you're going to do is to pray and say, Lord, 21 days is over today. These are my desires for myself, for my family, for my career. The second thing, the fourth prayer is that, Lord, tell me what you want me to give. God will say, is 1,000 naira. Please, if it says 1,000, stay there. Don't give more than what God has said you should give. Because you are here to impress nobody. If it says, give your first 100,000, that's it. It's your first 1 million. Oh, the first $10,000, the first 10 million. Whatever it says, Lord, I will do it. And the last thing is this. When you, when you receive it, commit and say, I will do it. I'm going to ask everybody. That's why you have this one stage. If you can. Just, they will give this word, they will say, name, please don't write any name. We don't need any name. I don't know why they wrote that there. Just write what your pledge is. Just a point of contact on the stage. You don't have to write any name. Just say, I'm giving this point of contact on the stage. Praise God. And we'll release the blessing. Stand on your feet. Let's pray, everyone. And God is able to make all grace about towards you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have been fasting? Take the first one minute and go ahead and pray. Everything you've been asking him for. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Everything you've been asking for, go ahead and pray. This is your year of the quantum leap. In Jesus' name we pray. Ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do for sign the giving? Ask him. What is my portion? Oh, go ahead and give your first $1,000. Go ahead and give your first $10,000, $5,000, $2,000. Your first $10 million, your first five, your first $100,000, your first $1,000. Your first $10,000. In Jesus' name we pray. Please need your turn towards heaven. Ezekiel 2:2. 2, 2, he said, As and the spirit entered me as he spoke to me. Ezekiel 2:2. 2, 2. Pregedush and tokapas. See so produce a little. Grace works for Abraham. Grace works for Isaac. Grace works for Jacob. Akamada Galamatora Ramana Koshiata Everyone that desires this genuinely this hour receive an impartation grace for acceleration and multiplication Eino Koshiata Pali Elokomandolo Sheta 
receive grace for acceleration and impartation acceleration and multiplication no matter how big you are you will multiply no matter how small you are you multiply what will take you five years will happen this year in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus put those hands on yourself and prophesy 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 if you are believing for healing or a baby put one under your head and put the other one on your body and branch of and take a sister like a rock up to shadia as you are declared receive your portion in jesus name this year will be your most amazing year favor will come from those you know from those you don't know in the name of jesus everything will align for your god to manifest ah the same god that's helped harvesters the same god that's helped next level prayer that same god that helped us in one press he will help you in the name of jesus this grace will spill on your children it will spill on your children's children in the name of jesus every hand and every hand i touch i declare bless hallelujah wave your hands and thank him amen shake two people and say congratulations you can have your seat